good morning and thank you everyone for uh, for being here. Um, my name is Marta Salvador. I am um, I work for the Tourism Innovation Center in Portugal, and today we have. Um, the third of the webinars, uh, the deep dive webinars in artificial intelligence that uh, are from the Tourbit project. Um, before we will start, and uh, before I start to present our guests today, our experts in artificial intelligence, I will shortly pass some the words to Leonie Han from the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce. And will she give us a short presentation on the, on the, um, the objectives of the Turbid project? Leonie? Good morning. Thank you, Marta. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, also from my side, my name is Leonie Hin from the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to give you just a short introduction into the project Turbid. It's kind of the framework under which uh, these uh, webinars um, that one of them uh, is happening today, um, yeah, is, is framed. So um, this project is a project with which we have the objective to foster digitalization of European tourism SMEs. It's a project that's funded uh, by the European Union under a specific program for the competitiveness of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. And there we presented this project to a call a specific call for innovation uptake and digitalization in the tourism sector. We started the project in January this year and it will last for 30 months and it's led by the Catalan Tourist Board. Um, next please, Marta. And, but we also have a, a set of other partners on board from across Europe uh, to implement this project. Uh, one of them, the Barcelona Chamber of Commerce that I'm representing. There's also the Welcome City Lab from Paris uh, in France, Arc Tour in Slovenia, the Cluster Hospitality Brussels, which is hosted by the Hub Brussels in Belgium, the Iceland Tourism Cluster, and the Lapland University of Applied Science and uh, NEST, the Tourism Innovation Center in Portugal that Marta is uh, representing today. So altogether, um, we as a partnership have the objective uh, with this project to support tourism SMEs in the uptake of digitalization and innovation innovation uh, when we do that by fostering their skills, their knowledge and their network. And specifically, uh, we are doing that uh, in the framework of a so-called three pillar scheme uh, that we wrote, wrote out that's based on um, yeah the first pillar learning, the second pillar building, and there is a third pillar called testing and implementing. So what is this three pillar system or uh, framework exactly about? So under the first pillar learn, we are uh, among other activities uh, doing this deep dive sessions. Um, yeah, one of them happening today, but we also uh, have uh, undertaken a series of interviews with experts and with stakeholders uh, and businesses from the tourism sector to um, kind of learn about their obstacles, their challenges when it comes to digitalization, but also on opportunities in digitalization. So we kind of can build the rest of our activities based on, on that knowledge that we have gathered. And we have also designed a so-called digital readiness index, which is an online tool specifically made for tourism businesses where they can evaluate their level, their state of digitalization, and then plan their um, yeah, their activities or uh, what they need to do in order to digitalize their business. And under the pillar build, we have um, set up a online community. Some of you maybe already know it. Uh, it's called Tourbiz that we all invite you to form part of. We will also uh, carry out a um, European hackathon and different what we call co-creation workshops on local level um, under which um, you will be able to get inspiration and to plan specific projects for the third pillar where you will be able to implement those uh, projects and even get funding for this uh, projects um, through our call for proposals that we will launch 
uh, early next year, uh, where, as I said, you can present your, um, your uh, own um, digitalization project and receive up to 9,000 euros of funding. So we all invite you kind of to, um, yeah, um, join this um, process, this journey um, together with us and onboard your digitalization um, process. And yeah, there are lots of activities upcoming in the project. And if you join the community or connect to our social media, et cetera, you will for sure be updated about uh, what's happening next and will not miss out on any activity. Thank you. I'll give back to Marta. Well, uh, for now, thank you, Leonie. Um, for now, I would like just to, to tell you to, to, to present you our guests today. Um, and before I present you, we, I would just like to say that if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and our guests will try to, to respond in the end of the session. But for now, so today, um, in the beginning, we'll have um, Karina Gibert. She is the Director of Research Center for Intelligent Data Science and Artificial uh, Intelligence at Barcelona Polytechnic University. Uh, then we will have Alex Navarro uh, from Talent 5. And then from Portugal, Alize Boivin from IGF. So these will be our guests for today. Um, I will pass now the, the words to Karina. Karina. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sharing my, my screen now. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And um, they asked me, the organization asked me to make a short introduction on artificial intelligence. And that's what I'm trying to do in, in the short time. So. Uh, as you asked, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. sorry, sorry, not in the first place. That was the end. <laughs> so um, artificial intelligence is a discipline that has a very, very precise beginning. So it was born in the Dartmouth Summer School convoked by Professor John McCarthy in 1990s, in 1956, in which 10 um, relevant personalities for the moment were uh, working together for two months, deciding or uh, investigating if uh, the activities that the human beings perform requiring intelligence could be specified in such a precise way so that to make um, to make a, a machine performing it no and uh, the result of this summer school was that this uh, seemed possible through all those formal languages provided by the computer science and the formal logics and that was the beginning of the discipline this was happening, so today, yeah, later, let's say, uh, Turing was uh, formalizing his famous Turing test to decide where a system is an artificial intelligence or not. And the idea should be that if you are talking to someone behind the wall and you do not distinguish if it is human or not, then this is an, an artificial intelligence. And I guess we still didn't solve the problem. So we still don't have systems that when you are talking to them with, in, a hidden, uh, in a hidden way, uh, you don't identify they are not a person. No? So we are still, we are still uh, trying to reach that limit. Uh, but one important thing is that this discipline um, is born under two different perspectives. One is the perspective of Professor McCarthy and all the community coming from logics uh, whose main interest was to try to build machines that were imitating how human being, beings uh, think, how they reason, and that they developed in an important way all the uh, automatic reasoning uh, systems and all, all, all the part of thinking, the cognitive part of, of artificial intelligence and the symbolic artificial intelligence. And on the other side, 
there was um, the community coming from cybernetics that were uh, constituting what we know as connectionist AI, and that's the one in which we are using more bio-inspired models that artificial neural networks, uh, swarm intelligence, um, and colony, and all these kind of um, algorithms, generic algorithms that are all of them inspired in some biological system that works in a certain advanced way, let's say, and in which the and deep learning is also part of that in this moment. That's what we call sub-symbolic system, in which the important thing is not to imitate how human uh, things or reasons, but to solve uh, problems that human solves as well as human do, that means that uh, the solution is the same or better, but it doesn't mind that much how this solution is composed. So in these systems, the solutions are built uh, based on many, many computational, uh, computational algorithms that use a lot of combinatorial uh, systems and algebra and other kind of things that has nothing to see with the thinking of the human beings, but they, they reach uh, up to the solutions in quick time and sometimes better than human. So the functions are different. One is more oriented to understand human thinking and to augment human thinking. And the other one is more oriented to um, augment human performing in, in, intelligent, in intelligent actions, no? So um, the history of artificial intelligence is um, unstable. Let's say it, it's born in 1956. Then around 70s, there is a very big crisis because it seems that the, the solutions provided by artificial intelligence in this cognitive approach are non-scalable to big problems. Then we move to the era of the expert systems and we started to understand that we need to inject specific knowledge of the specific problem we want to solve into the reasoner. And that provided a generation of very specific expert systems that were working quite well. But uh, again, when we try to make this reasoning more general, it seems that we, we reach a, a limitation, let's say. And then there was a second hibernation of the artificial intelligence. And in the, the 80s, the, 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 uh, the restart, let's say, of the discipline was based on machine learning. In that moment, there's a change of paradigm. The discipline puts the focus on data, not on what experts know and how to model in a formal way what experts know about the problem and the knowledge about the problem, but on getting data that talks about the world and induce what's the knowledge in behind this data, let's say. So, so that's the, the new era, then with the development of the Internet of Things and the cloud uh, technologies and all the supercomputing and all this kind of thing, this thing becomes scalable and uh, jumps to the uh, productive sector. So today we have artificial intelligence more or less around us in many different in many different places, and particularly in in, in the tourist service and, and in the in the applications related to tourism as well. And uh, we already learned that data is a strategic asset to better better manage organizations and so on. No, so uh, just a short visualization of what is famous today, what is popular today in artificial intelligence is basically machine learning and big data. But artificial intelligence is a very broad uh, field that contains robotics, manipulation of objects, uh, problem solving, knowledge representation, reasoning, multi-criteria decision support, speech recognition, text uh, analysis, textual analysis, uh, computer vision and ethics and many other things. So what, what we perceive from the industry is a very, very short part, maybe the most uh, marketable part of the artificial intelligence. That's the definition of the area done by the AI Watch uh, in 2020. And we are surrounded of it. So more or less all of us are uh, aware of the existence of Alexas and Ceres and all these 
voice assistants that are using speech recognition and uh, compu computational linguistics to, to solve many problems. Most of us are used to live together with the GPS that is solving one of the most ancient problems on artificial intelligence based on the cognitive part, which is planning and particular difficult planning because you have to meet the, se the sequence of actions and ensure that all the path is following the roads and it, the roads and it's not going through the buildings, for example. No. Roombas are already using artificial vision systems that are able to understand what is a door, what is a, a wall, what is a carpet, and they are reacting accordingly. Uh, to, to manage their movements and what is a stair, so they know that they do not have to jump down the stairs, for example, and these kind of things. Uh, in Industry 4.0, we have all those automatic control uh, guided by artificial intelligence. This is on water potabilization, for example, but we have everywhere in the industry now. Uh, virtual reality is also plenty of uh, artificial intelligence, and we have uh, it, for example, in the video games and in the serious games as well. Uh, this, and it's very related with user experience in tourism, for example, no? the, auto, the autonomous car is already a reality. We have uh, now a company of lorries that uh, transport, uh, merch, um, transport products. Um, it's a logistic uh, company that is using uh, autonomous lorries in, uh, in uh, Texas, I think, from a couple of months, it is uh, operating this way. And for example, in industrial design, so the jet turbines, for example, have been designed with genetic algorithms or in planning as well, no? planning and scheduling. So in Hong Kong, for example, we have 10,000 engineers that goes every day in the night to make the maintenance and reparations of the of the underground network in the city and they are organized and planned by an artificial intelligence no human intervention and they make all this route with the kits the the the, the appropriated kits of uh, of um, products they need to make the reparations and so on and that works perfectly and of course uh, diagnosis based in medical image is one of the stars of the applications field. So there are um, algorithms that analyze tomographies, for example, and are able to identify uh, the beginning of a disease much before than human mind, human, human eye is uh, able to understand that there is a problem there. No? Connected cities, ambient intelligence, all those sensors that uh, tell us, for example, that the bus requires 20 minutes to come to our stop, so we have the time to take a coffee, for example, or how to organize the services of ambulances in, in, in the city and so on. Um, and um, also at home, no? the motics is one of the most primitive versions of artificial intelligence placed on, uh, on connected uh, and connectivity and ambient intelligence. So uh, the control of uh, an airport, for example, is also uh, taking advantage of artificial intelligence. And there is also uh, Pervasis per presence of artificial intelligence in marketing, in digital marketing, and also in all of the searches. So when we are uh, making searches in Google, in Amazon, whenever we are working with, then we receive a lot of banners and advertisements and publicity. And not only this, but when we search, when we make searches, the answers we receive as, as our search are also guided by the profile that all those searches has been done according to our activity, our previous activity. So we already receive a view of the, of the general wall of all those systems, which is mediated by what an artificial intelligence is doing with our, uh, by modeling our, our activity. No? Uh, this is also on the basis of customer segmentation and personalized uh, marketing and all these kind of things that in tourism are quite uh, easy to, to, to use in this moment. No? This has some limitations that is maybe 
the most delicate part because uh, sometimes uh, we can we can cross a red line that's becoming invasive of violating the privacy of the data that the system is using and these kind of things that, that makes very very uh, relevant to develop an ethics of the artificial intelligence uh, system basically because we are now in a new era that's the area of digital society that was declared in 2018 by, by the Yes, by the United Nations, and that means that the, the, there is a change of paradigm in the in the society. We are moving to a new society where digital services will become uh, the basis of the of the social infrastructure, let's say, and uh, most of the activities will be uh, incorporating technology in, in ICT technology in a certain way, and in that sense, it's uh, this is also pervasive. No, it's it's affecting all kind of verticals, including tourism, of course. And the uh, European view, in which we are already aligned, is that um, we would like that all this development development is inserted in a respect respectful uh, view regarding sustainability and uh, sustainable development goals and all agenda 2030 and so on no? so um there is a lot of movement so european community european commission has made recommendations for ethical guidelines of artificial intelligence catalonia made a declaration in 2017 uh, wearing of this uh, of this uh, kind of Non, 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 non so, so nice use of the artificial intelligence. Uh, Europe is now working on the AI Act, that's uh, for the future European law of artificial intelligence, trying to frame which kind of uses of data for the people will be acceptable or not. UNESCO in uh, 2021, in November last year, was also aligning with these ethical recommendations of the European Commission from the 2018. And that's nice because UNESCO is interpolating uh, for the first time uh, China and United States that have another view of how artificial intelligence should develop. No, uh, In Spain, we have a strategy. Uh, in Catalonia, we have the Catalan strategy for artificial intelligence aligned with all those principles. The main idea is that human rights should be the red line. So we propose an artificial intelligence for the common good, centered on the person and trustworthy. That's very important as well. No? That's the European view. And just to finish some projects to, to give you an idea. No? This is on um, industrial symbiosis. This one, these are some projects that we performed in our group in the last year. So that one is on um, circular economy. That means it makes matches in between waste from some enterprises, from some companies that might be inputs of in other industrial processes. And they identify the matches and make um, the alarms so the, the two actors can, can agree together to share uh, this product and avoid the residual management, let's say. No? Uh, this is about uh, launching consultations directly to the citizenship in such a way that they can be processed by an artificial intelligence that is able to generate the entire final report with all the layout and everything. So in a couple of hours after closing the consultation, you can uh, basically have your executive meeting and making decisions. So this is basically oriented to uh, management of disruptions. So very useful for those situations in which you don't have systemic data. Uh, to query about what is happening, but also to get participative uh, processes in which different uh, collectives uh, can can, uh, can manifest their interests, for example. So the idea is that you launch the consultation directly to the actors, to the, to the, the users that might be citizens or tourists or managers or whatever it is, and then the system process and directly generates the report that the decision maker can consume 
this is about digital digitalization of social services with some uh, different, uh, a couple of cities here in, in Catalonia. And here the main, um, let's say the main challenge is how artificial intelligence can be proactive and recommend, which is the next step in your uh, process of uh, relationship with the public administration in that case, and it, this is transferable to other topics, but also the inclusive approach regarding digital gaps. So it's very important when we digitalize, digitalize uh, <laughs> processes to take into account that we should not uh, put interfaces that make barriers to the users that are not proficient with uh, with uh, ICT skills. No, and Arena. this is more than finishing. That's the last one. Yeah, uh, Wells Wells uh, Wells analysis. So they put uh, they have some. We are using uh, image satellites to identify the paths and to discover where they are uh, going to to reproduce to uh, forward the, um, the, the calls for uh, conservation of the, of the, of these, or, or the protection of these areas, no? And that's the end. <laughs> thank you very much. Karina, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. It was very, very inspiring. Now, uh, as we are short on time, I would pass just a word to Alex. But first, Karina, I would ask you to stop sharing your screen, thank if you. possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And should have anyone some questions to put here or about project, please put in the, in the chat. But now, Alex, please. Okay. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. My name is Alex Navarro. It's a really uh, pleasure to be here. Let me introduce uh, Santiago Molins. Santiago Molins is the, is the CEO and uh, co-founder of Talent5. Talent5 is a Spanish uh, um, startup working in the recruitment market. To be more accurate, uh, working in the, in the technical profiles recruiting market. So without the dilation, let's hear about the, the story behind, uh, behind the Talent5. Go ahead, Hi, and nice to meet you, everyone. Um, better, thanks. Uh, I will share my presentation. I hope everyone can see it. So let me introduce Talentify. Talentify is the most efficient digital platform that helps companies to hire IT profiles. And we had those companies in less than 10 days. We can, uh, um, we can uh, um, upload the ideal candidate in the first 10 days. We already know that uh, uh, IT candidates, IT talent is a real necessity of uh, all companies in tourism and also abroad tourism. Uh, in Portugal, in Spain, uh, in Europe, and also abroad Europe, uh, there is more demand than, than that offer. Uh, every company that uh, needs a new candidate is, is, is willing to hire uh, from yesterday, and, and it's impossible to hire in, in the first month. So it's, it's a very important problem to all companies. Uh, we try to uh, solve this problem. Uh, we try to solve these uh, needs of the market. Uh, creating the, the first platform here in Spain, also in, in, in Europe, uh, the first platform that connects the company with recruiters. Okay, it's a marketplace with both uh, uh, users and we uh, add value to, to the employer, to our client, um, prescribing a sign-in to the three best recruiters, depending on each kind of position. Okay, and we can do that thanks to an algorithm based in AI technology, AI technology, sorry. So um, for today is the only solution in, in, in Spain. In Europe, we were the first, but it's not the only one. And, and, and we are keeping improving uh, to, to, to the best solution. So our successful results, this technology, mainly is the technology, the, the methodology is more or less the same. We connect the recruiters and recruiters has the, their own uh, 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 techniques to attract the, the talent. But what we add here is the technology of uh, AI uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, we can assure that we um, find the ideal candidate in the first 10 days. And we also can, uh, can um, be able to, to achieve uh, these two metrics that for us is very important. Uh, we 
can guarantee that the 70% of the people uh, uploaded in, in the platform are valid. And we can uh, guarantee that the two over three opportunities that we uh, compete to other uh, um, solutions, to other talent attraction solutions, uh, Talify is the one who gets the final candidate hired. So how Talify get these results with IA technology? We already developed an IA algorithm to assign the three recruiters. This is something uh, already done and in the past. And we are now in some projects where I, I highlight these three one that these three uh, projects that are probably the, the, the main ones uh, for, for this 2022. We are uh, generating an art alert system um, to, to our recruitment processes that uh, could help the, 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 the employer and also us uh, who are uh, um, um, trying to, to accessorate our clients. Um, with some alerts of the process. Uh, there is not enough candidates, there is uh, too much candidates in some stage and they are not uh, evolving, etc. We also have in mind, uh, well, this is important because uh, we, we need the AI technology to not only generate the alerts, to also to propose the, the best solution in each case. We also uh, are developing a candidate filter uh, with uh, AI applications such as facial uh, recognition, such as uh, um, uh, technical code reading, and PL, and so on, uh, to filter the candidates uh, before upload to, to 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 the platform, and also before uh, the, the employer could see it. And uh, also, uh, we are uh, generating a candidate uh, engagement project that uh, is aiming to reduce the turnover rate. Um, with a more or less the same as an intelligent algorithm uh, that that uh, could help us to to um, have a better match uh, between the company and the, the the candidate culture. And what will happen in the future? Well, in the mid-term, long-term future. Then if I have two another uh, goal projects, big projects. The first one is the candidate database. Uh, to reduce time uh, for recruiters uh, with the source of candidates. Uh, that will be with a natural language processing uh, uh, intelligent text reader uh, that will help recruiters uh, to automatic updating uh, of candidates' uh, uh, profiles and, and for sure take a lot of time uh, for them. And also, we want another, another project, another uh, stream for us is the candidate company matching. And nowadays we match uh, recruiters with companies, with employers. And in the future, um, we want to match the candidate with the company. And the thing is, okay, today we assign three recruiters. In the future, we want to assign 15 candidates. It doesn't matter if it came from one recruiter, three yesterday, or 15 different recruiters. What we want is to help companies to have the, the the match with the ideal candidate faster and better. So, so companies that um, today are working with us, uh, we work with them, collaborate with them, helping them with uh, uh, IT profiles. Um, you may know all uh, world books, uh, you may all know Telefonica, OGB, uh, some companies that are uh, startups that are unicorn and SPAC. Um, so some of them are, are uh, our uh, startups, some of them are international uh, international corporates, because a uh, tech problem is a problem for companies, not only for digital startups. Um, I think it's all. I think I kind of uh, reduce my time in order to to keep the the, the meeting at time. I uh, will stop sharing the, the the my screen. I mean, uh, for sure, if you have any questions at the end, I will answer. Thank you. Thank you, Santi. It was a very good presentation and you kept it on, on time. I will now, before the questions, pass the awards to Alize and she will, she will present us her use case. Alize? Yes, hi everyone. Um, very happy to be here with you today. So yeah, I'll try to, uh, to keep it short. Um, 
I hope you can all see my screen. So uh, what is uh, IGF? IGF is a um, communication hub uh, powered by artificial intelligence specialized in the hospitality industry. So who we are, we started in 2016. Uh, we now have offices in Portugal, in Spain, in the UK and in France. Uh, so since the early days of IGF, we kept on developing uh, our client portfolio and we now have uh, over 1,600 hotels in more than 32 countries. And as you can see some uh, client uh, references below, so we work with a small independent hotel with less than 40 rooms and uh, international uh, chains with um, over 100 uh, properties. So why, uh, why high GF? Uh, we realized that uh, with the lack of, uh, of staff and, uh, um, and the COVID situation actually uh, didn't help. Uh, so the lack of staff plus uh, the multiplication of uh, the multiple um, communication platforms such as the website, uh, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, Google My Business, WhatsApp, etc. It's really hard for the hospitality industry, you know, to uh, to be as reactive as they would like to be. So uh, the studies show that 70% of the email they receive do not get uh, an answer and 46% on social media so meaning that for this uh, industry they um, they miss out a potential a huge uh, revenue for um, for especially for the uh, for the hotel so how we can help hotel with uh, artificial intelligence so um, we can uh, so let's uh, let's meet Sophia uh, Sophia she is um, a young mother she is planning on her uh, next trip uh, this summer uh, with her family uh, so what she did is um, she already made a selection on otabooking.com and now she goes on each hotel website to get more information, more content, more photo. So as soon as, um, as, soon as she arrived on the Hotel Central website, um, the virtual assistant um, will, uh, will start you know, engaging with her because Sophia, she has uh, tons of questions and, uh, and she wants uh, instant answer. So she wants you know, to know um, what time is the checking. She wants to know um, what time does the breakfast start? Uh, she wants to make sure that the hotel can provide a baby cot for, for her kids. Like all these very basic questions that you know uh, the virtual uh, assistant can, um, can help her with instead of um, her calling the reception, maybe you know, wait for uh, two, three minutes before someone at the reception um, answer the phone and answer each of her question. So the whole process here, it's super smooth. The virtual assistant powered by artificial intelligence will automatically and instantly give her all the um, all her answer and as soon as uh, Sophia um, has all her answers then she's ready to uh, to make the, the booking so that's also how uh, our artificial intelligence can help the hotel to increase their uh, direct booking so the virtual assistant will ask her uh, when she wants to check in to check out for how many adults uh, how many kids and uh, Sophia will be able to see the availability, the room type, and uh, confirm a room. So as soon as, um, so this, this process was, uh, the reservation process was done on the website, but the same process can be done on social media, uh, any platform that uh, the hotel uh, is present. So as soon as the reservation is confirmed, now, uh, you know, Sophia starts to be a bit uh, stressed uh, because um, so she's traveling with a young kid and uh, she doesn't want to spend too much time, you know, at the checking before getting a room. So the good news is uh, 48 hours before uh, arrival at the Hotel Central, the Hotel Central send her an automatic but personalized WhatsApp with the option to, for her to fill uh, the online checking form. So meaning uh, the online checking form will be automatically uploaded into the uh, hotel system. So when uh, Sophia arrives at the hotel with her family, then you know the team at the reception can spend more uh, quality time with, uh, with Sophia and her family, explain to them the hotel, the facilities, the activities, uh, etc. 
then during your stay, Sophia will be able to continue to use WhatsApp to book additional services. For example, here, uh, the spa treatment. So uh, she really wants to book a spa treatment, just, you know, um, uh, she, she, can, she can have access to the menu of the spa, the opening hours, everything, uh, all the information. Uh, and she can book a spa in two clicks um, within within WhatsApp. So all this will be done, you know, with the interaction of the artificial intelligence. So it doesn't mean that, you know, she won't have any interaction with the staff, uh, but it just means that, you know, for, for these very basic uh, questions, interaction, the artificial intelligence can do an amazing job and be present on, uh, you know, the app, that Sophia is using on daily basis, meaning uh, WhatsApp. So she can do everything um, on the day of her checkout. She will also receive a message from the Hotel Central, just you know, to remind her that she needs to, to leave the room by um, 12. Uh, and the hotel can also help them if they want you know, some assistance to book a taxi or anything, um, anything else. So, you know, to, so the whole process will, um, uh, will allow uh, Sophia to be super happy with her, with her stay. Uh, so she will uh, probably leave a very positive review um, about her stay um, at the Hotel Central. Then after, uh, after the checkout, Sophia received a thank you message from uh, the Hotel uh, Central. So that's uh, you know, also good um, for her next trip uh, and uh, to, to put some uh, loyalty. Um, so yeah, the whole communication was, uh, was done on WhatsApp, um, but we do also provide this kind of communication on SMS and uh, email. Then, so that was from the user perspective and now from the uh, hotel perspective, so how it works uh, as soon as the, the artificial intelligence reaches its limits, so when um, it doesn't have the answer, doesn't understand the question, or simply if the, the, the guest want to speak with a live agent, because again, we are not here to replace the human. Um, the artificial intelligence is able to notify the hotel. So the hotel will have access to a communication platform will, with, where everything will be centralized. So if the communication comes from uh, social media, website, WhatsApp, et cetera, and will be, everything will be centralized here. The hotel will uh, also have access to uh, some customization, uh, will be able to build some marketing campaigns, have access to metrics, uh, be able to see the return on investment, how many direct bookings were um, made through the chatbot, how many conversations were um, generated, etc., etc. To share with you a concrete uh, case study, so Baya Principe is one of our um, clients. Baya Principe, I'm sure you all know, uh, this group's a Spanish group uh, present in over 25 countries worldwide. Um, and thanks to the uh, artificial intelligence, um, they managed to uh, increase the number of direct booking um, in a, in a concrete way, because uh, in the past 12 months, um, they confirmed over 12,800 direct booking with a total of 14.7 uh, million euros and everything with 100% automation. So meaning 100% uh, all the interaction uh, were done by the artificial uh, intelligence. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Lise, thank you for your sharing and your presentation. I was checking if, um, if we had any questions, but not yet so far. Should you want to put any questions to our guests, please feel free. Yes, we have a question for Alize uh, from Veronique Renard from Brussels. Uh, she's asking, oops, give me just one question. If the, is the implementation of the digital solution for hotel customers positively all by the staff or the teams who worried about job reduction? Any experience to share? Yeah, yeah. So no, again, you know, the idea is really not to replace a uh, human is, um, but the artificial intelligence is here really to help uh, the staff at the reception, at the reservation, uh, at any department, basically, to, you know, uh, offload um, the work on, uh, on very basic tasks. 
So yeah, the artificial intelligence is here to help on basic tasks. So you know, when the guest asks, what time is the check-in? What time is the check-out? Um, do you have a parking? They be caught like those very basic interaction. Um, the, the, the human experience is very limited. Uh, so, and, uh, and we know that 60% of the call that, you know, the hotel receive at the reception, it's only for very basic question. And it's it's a lot uh, for for the team at the hotel to handle because you know at the same time they also have to welcome a new guest, um, answer the phone and everything. So so only okay. positive uh, feedback from the team. <laughs> Very well, Alize. Another question for you. Um, there is a question that if you are only targeting hotels now or um, or OTAs as well. Only. Uh, hotel as customer um so we do have an integration with uh booking.com uh but it's only once the reservation is confirmed so we are able to centralize you know the question that your hotel receive within the the communication uh platform so if um the guest you know that made the booking through booking.com as an equation then the team will receive the question through the platform um so yeah i guess you know we uh, we target both uh but the idea of the artificial intelligence is uh, is really to help the hotel to increase the number of direct booking so not really uh OTA wise yes um, i hope i answer your question yes i guess so i don't know if anyone is is any more questions? We are rich. Marta, yes. yeah, if you let me, I, I have a question uh, for Santi from uh, Talentify. Now, I was just wondering because like the solution you presented seemed to apply to any sector, no? So could you maybe um, just emphasize a bit like how this relates concretely to the tourism sector, like how or what specific digital talent is needed in the tourism sector um, and how you can um, yeah, respond to, to that demand? Or do you maybe have to filter the profiles according to the sector experience or how can tourism businesses specifically benefit from your solution? Yeah, totally understandable. Uh, thanks Thank for you. the question. Um, the, the, the platform works for almost every sector because almost every sector needs uh, IT, uh, IT talent. Uh, but for us, it's important, uh, for instance, uh, uh, if you are in a booking uh, website, that there are a lot of uh, uh, data transfer. Um, this data transfer is, is something peculiar of the sector. And probably the candidate needs experience uh, previously in the same sector or in sectors that uh, the, the, the industry have um, um, important similarities to those uh, requirements. So um, first of all, when we have a new need, a new uh, vacancy for, for our clients, um, the first step for us in this time is to uh, parameterize the, the, the position. And most, on, most of the cases in, in, in banking and in tourism, uh, the two most important sectors that are differentiated of the others, uh, needs also uh, candidates that have a, a previous experience in the same sector. So this is something we parameterize and, and, and recruiters are really specialized in, in tourism. Uh, we have a, a lot of recruiters uh, here in Spain. There are um, two or three important hubs in, 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 in tourism, um, Palma, Mallorca, Valencia and Barcelona. Um, we have a lot of recruiters specialized in, in, in this uh, concrete areas and in these concrete industries. Uh, so uh, the, the, the important thing on the model is uh, to have uh, as much as possible uh, recruiters. Obviously, it's a marketplace. You have you need to balance between employers and recruiters. But uh, the most important thing is uh, to have the most uh, specialized recruiters in all sectors, in all functional areas, in all geographic areas. Okay. Thank you. Thank that you. clarified it. <laughs> yeah. Just one final question for Karina, maybe, if she's here. Um, and, th and this is, is pretty much a question that for us as a tourism center, innovation center, that we ask, uh, that we have all the time, and that Alize already uh, talked a bit, is that 
the, the question about uh, artificial intelligence can operate almost all tasks. Um, so what, what, what we've been asked is that if, if it is going to replace all humans, you know, if it's going to steal the jobs, I know we already talked about this, but it is so common to, to hear this, this question that I think it's important for that. I'm afraid that's one of the most famous uh, questions, exactly. most popular questions. We and I'd been... like to hear from you, yes. <laughs> and that's why I was introducing the, the idea of the Turing test in, the, in my second slide, I think. So, um, I mean, artificial intelligence is a very, very powerful technology that is able to help us a lot in, uh, in performing many complex uh, activities on behalf of us, no? But um, in particular, the first um, principle of the ethical guidelines of the uh, European Commission is uh, human agency and human oversight, and is asking um, for an artificial intelligence that is always supervised by a human being and never uh, working alone. So that's the proposal that uh, Europe is making for the artificial intelligence is also the proposal on which we are working. We, in fact, work very much on what we call intelligent decision support systems. That means that they support decisions, but they do not make decisions. So the idea should be that we should never left an artificial intelligence doing the things alone. Um, the idea is that uh, we can delegate on these uh, technologies all the low cognitive activities that uh, might be more or less uh, done in a good level of uh, quality for the artificial intelligence and that we uh, overcome. Uh, so um, a very important part of the bureaucracy must be delegated so we can concentrate on being kind with the people, dedicate more, kind, more time to attend persons and to take care about the general process and this kind of thing. So the idea is that AI should help us to elevate the level of our activities and not to substitute us. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your for your answer. So I think at this point we will finish our webinar for today. We had Karina giving us an explanation, a short, a brief explanation about the origins, the evolution on AI, the branches, several applications, not only for tourism, but for other businesses. Then we have a use case with Santin and Alex that, um, that has to do with the human resources, something that is, is, is being a challenge at the moment especially for tourism SMEs, of course, for all. And, and it's very on spot at this moment. And uh, finally, with Alize and IGF, we had the uh, um, communication support for hotels, um, also very useful for the SMEs. I would now just uh, share one last slide for you because our, on our Turbid project, we are doing seven deep dive webinars on several technologies. We are on the, on the third one. Uh, we still have more four to go on Internet of Things, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and blockchain. So if you are interested about no, mo knowing more about these technologies, please join us in the, in the weeks to come. And to know more use cases and more examples from other countries, please join our community as well. Thank you for being here with us and for joining and see you next time. Bye-bye.